Yo guys, welcome back to another video at Trader's Journey here on YouTube. I'm really, really excited to bring you this video. A lot of people have been requesting this particular video to help with your trading. Um, so I'm excited to bring this content to you. Just before I get into this video, if you haven't checked out my Instagram yet, it is traderjourney underscore official. Um, I leave lots of content, trading tricks and tips on my Instagram and I am active there daily if you guys have any questions. So be sure to check it out and give us a follow on traderjourney underscore official. So let's get straight into this video and um, yeah, I'm excited to bring this one to you. A lot of people have been asking, um, how do you actively manage your risk? How do you make sure that you don't lose lots of money when trading? How do you ensure that you profit? And um, this is one of the key areas that I had to work on to ensure that I remained profitable for one year, two years. And it took me a long time to understand the importance of risk management and um, setting a stop loss is probably one of the most important areas of trading. Well, for me as a beginner, when I when I began trading to, to minimize and mitigate my losses, a stop loss was my only way of managing my risk. And when you begin trading, one of the most important things is to preserve your capital. So the only way you can do that is by setting a, a accurate and um, appropriate stop loss for every trade that you enter in. Now, a lot of traders may watch other videos from other people and, and they don't set stop losses, but I think that is a, it, it, sets, uh, it, it sets yourself up for a lot more risk and loss loss when you begin training trading so i think it's very important for any beginner trader to ensure you understand this concept and make sure you apply it to everyday trading um when when you get started so as you can see here guys this is tastyworks i've got the apple stock option chain up here you can see that from here so i'm going to be talking you through the exact way i place a options trade now this is going to be slightly different to my previous video because the previous video was just a simple buying and selling of a contract but now i'm going to get into some more of the other details as to what i particularly use when trying to set up a stop loss for every trade and set an auto close for profit percentages now um if you haven't seen the buying and selling video i would i would advise to check that out briefly before watching this as this will provide some extra context and help you help you out a bit more and help you to understand this video so I'm gonna get straight into this. So we're looking at the Apple stock and say for instance, I wanted to place a call contract at the money for a day trade. Um, I would be simply clicking on the ask. Now the ask here is 2.03, got Delta 51, the contract looks great. Lot of, um, lot of volume, lot of um, volume for this particular contract. There's a lot of interest here. So I'm gonna select that. So say I had a day trade, I'm expecting Apple to go from say 132 to 136. I'm very bullish. I'll simply select ask 2.03, click on the price and you'll be presented with this screen. Now, this screen I've covered on my previous video as well and what you would previously do if you weren't setting a stop loss, you would simply click review and send. Now that's not what you wanna do if you are trying to set a stop loss and a auto close for a percentage profit. What you wanna be selecting is this icon here which says bracket. Now. Once you click bracket, you're presented with this screen. Now, this is this is very self-explanatory for a lot of you traders, um, but I'm gonna explain it into some detail so everybody can understand. So as soon as you click bracket, you're presented with this screen. Now, this is the screen you wanna be using every time you place a trade. You don't wanna be using the, the simpler version, you wanna be looking at this, because as you can see here, you've got your order entry starting point, you've got close at profit, and you've got your stop loss. Now, this is, the, the, the ideal way you can become a successful trader just purely from using this screen. So say for instance, you, you've you figured out a strategy either from myself or from, from wherever, from something you've defined, you've defined your own trading strategy and you're going out there to start trading. Now, say for instance, you have an eight out of 10 success rate. If you had an eight out of 10 success rate, the two trades which are losing trades, you wanna be stopped out of that trade as soon as possible to avoid any further losses. Because if you let those two losers run and um, you lost the complete contract price and they became worthless, then you effectively could wipe out your eight out of 10 profits from, from your other trades. So you wanna, you wanna mitigate the loss as much as possible on your losing trades so that your profitable trades 
makes your account overall profitable and this is the only way of doing that so i'm going to talk you through the screen very briefly um but with enough detail for you guys to to get on and trade with stop losses so on your on the left of the screen you'll see your order entry starting point this is simply the order entry point and uh, what you'd filled in in the previous screen i'll just go back one second because what I what you would have noticed from my previous video is I always go down the mid price between the bid the bid and the ask. So you want to go down the mid, select your quantity, select everything you want, make sure it's a call contract, not a put contract if that's what you're intending to do. Some people select the wrong side. It says up here calls and puts. So you select the, the quantity, you make sure you all of these areas are exactly what you want. You've placed a limit order. You then select bracket. Now you'll notice the limit price will be exactly what you'd selected from the previous screen. So your limit price is 201. The total cost is $201 because every contract is for a hundred of the stock. So you would times it by a hundred. So your total cost would be 201. Um, and that is your estimated total cost, 201. So that is your cost. That's your cost base for the trade. Now, going up to the top screen where it says close at profit. Now, you can you can set this at whatever percentage you want. If you're if you're happy with 20% profit, then you could simply lower this price and lower it all the way down to 20%. But for me, I generally keep it at 50% and close earlier if, if I'm seeing low volume, for instance. But I, I'd advise any beginner trader to set it at roughly 10 to 20% per trade. It just keeps everything consistent and gives you consistent profits rather than getting chasing bigger percentage profits, but you can do that as you get more experienced. Now you'll see on each of these screens, there's a there is a drop down which says time in force. Now what that effectively means is good. Th this basically means good till canceled or good till date. Now what that basically means is good till canceled is this profit percentage will be always available until you cancel the trade or you or you um, close the trade. So this close at profit will always be valid and available. And uh, basically, as long as you're in the trade, it will still be effective. If you put good, good till date, it, I mean, it doesn't really matter this top screen close at profit. But if you put good till date, for instance, that is just essentially your expiry date of the contract. So it would be in force this profit percentage until the end expiring date. I, I don't really mess around with it. It's good till cancelled. That is absolutely fine. Now that it would be the same case for any of the other boxes. So for instance, stop loss, you would simply select good till cancelled and um, that's it. I, and an actual fact, good till date doesn't mean date of expiration. Sorry, it means good till end of the day. So end of close of play of the trading day. But you want to keep it as good till cancelled as that will be until the expiration of a contract or whenever you close the trade. So keep it at GTC for all areas. Um, so that covers close at profit. That covers your cost base for the for the trade. And you have a nice little summary at the top of the entry order entry with the expiry date, the, the strike price and the type of contract call or put um, and you've got days to expiration there five days so really handy really clean and really easy to understand now moving to on to the most important screen which is the stop loss area now you can see stop loss is for me set 25 percent what i would do um, obviously as a beginner you want that a lot less you want that at 10 percent so that 10 percent you would need to you would need to up the price up the stop trigger price and you could you can effectively change it from here if you want so let's say you put 1.90 there's five percent so let's, let's go to ten percent so so you you do need to flick around flick mess around with this so 1.81 is the contract price trigger that's your stop trigger so as soon as the contract price goes to 181 the, the trade will automatically exit it for you using this particular strategy. So you can you can mess around with it. I mean, 10% is what I'd advise. You can go up to 15% if you if you do want a bit more room for a trade. Um, but I'd always advise for anyone beginning trading, keep it at 10%, keep it tight, and keep your losses low. Now, um, selecting stop tight, I would I would personally go with limit. But if you're just a bit more 
um, uncertain of the risk and you want to go quickly out of trades you would hit market but I'd avoid market and stick with limit and keep your limit the same as your stop trigger um, maybe maybe slightly lower if you just want to be extra certain to exit the trade if the price is dropping quickly but it will automatically exit the trade for you um, I know a lot of people do use market because it just does it automatically as soon as it triggers boom the trade is gone you're out of the trade um, so it really depends on what you would like to do limits are good limits good and market is good but market if if the trigger hits and then the price drops massively then you will just be stopped out of the trade for whatever the market price is of the contract so it may make you slightly worse off but um it's more it's, it's a safer it's a safer way of doing it to ensure you do get stopped out but a limit price is um as soon as it triggers it will make sure it sells out at that particular price and nothing less nothing more it will exactly stop you out at that price so i mean i mean you can mess around with that it's up to you it's entirely up to you but it's very important you have that stop loss set so i mean this is a this is this is set at 9.5 percent now if you didn't have this set for whatever reason you didn't have your stop loss set you you may look away from your screen for a couple of minutes five minutes ten minutes and the price could have tanked and this could be showing as 40 percent and that is the, that is the, that is exactly the situation you want to be avoiding so it is very important you get this right now um if if 10 percent a loss of 19 dollars isn't much for you and you're thinking you know what it's not much let's go to 15 percent then that's absolutely fine you just need to make sure you are consistent with your stop loss percentage and you're consistent throughout your trades if you set it at 15 percent, make sure you do that consistently for every trade you don't you don't alter that i mean you could alter it if you're doing different strategies if you're scalping if you're day trading if you're swinging if you're buying leaps then you can alter that based on those strategies but if you're simply day trading um, I would try and keep the percentages as consistent as possible so you avoid massive losses. That is the main strategy for any beginner should be protecting your capital and slowly growing your account till you get the hang of it and then you can size up on trades once you are confident in your trading strategy. So that's exactly what I did guys and I hope this really helps you because the last thing I want is for all you traders, beginner traders to lose a lot of money and the whole purpose of this is to maintain your capital and grow your account steadily and consistently and ma and maintain consistent income that is the whole purpose of this so i hope this has helped you out guys if you did get some value from this video make sure you give me a like hit, me, hit the subscribe button as it does help me out and do be sure to follow me on instagram and if you are interested in using the tastyworks platform it's a very good beginner platform i'll leave the link in the description box below so you guys can get started um, so thanks very much for watching again and I will catch you all on the next video. Take care. Goodbye